Here are the most taxing graphic settings in Battlefield 6. If you're struggling to hit your target, FPS target, then these are the ones you should be looking at. Uh, first, there's screen space, illumination, SSGI. SSGI high can cut your frame rates by 30% or even more. Second, we have uh, sun shadow quality. These are the shadows cast by the sun at overkill. It can reduce your frame rates by 20 to 25%. Next, uh, volumetric quality. Uh, at ultra, it can reduce your frame rates by as much as 10%. Effects quality, these are the special effects you see during explosions and other collisions and debris. This doesn't really affect your average, but it can reduce your lows, your lowest frame rates by 5 to 8%. Now let's have a look at each setting in detail to see how it affects the fidelity and performance at each quality preset. Wibble illumination and ambient exclusion have a more profound impact indoors. Here we have GTO high and SSGI high. There's a pretty sizable difference between the two. GTAO renders highly detailed shadows along edges, crevices, corners, and boundaries. While SSGI primarily uh, emulates uh, bounce lighting, color bleeding, and indirect diffuse lighting. Here you can see the difference, primary difference. While uh, GTAO renders highly uh, the quite prominent, dark, more intense corner edge shadows. Uh, SSGI focuses more on the color bleeding effect. The scene looks more vibrant but lacks more detailed ambient shadows. We did a more in-depth video on this. Be sure to check that out. SSGI low and SSGI high look almost identical in indoor scenes. The Batman difference can be seen in darker corners where SSGI high uh, does a better job of uh, it's just slightly more illuminating than SSGI low, like this wall here. This is because of the fewer ray count at SSGI low compared to SSGI high. Without AO, uh, the scene looks rather uh, flat and dull uh, without the ambient shadows. Here's a comparison of off versus GTAO low and GTAO high. You can see that GTAO also uh, renders uh, an approximation of the character self shadow on the wall there. SSGI high is 22-25% slower than AO off. Uh, SSGI low is much more affordable, uh, coming in at around 10-11% uh, slower than AO off, and 
11% faster than SSGI high. GTO high low perform about the same and are only a couple of percent slower than AO off. For most people uh, playing at under 100 FPS, we recommend GTO high. But if you're aiming for 140 or 160 FPS, SSGI high might work well because in those scenarios, your uh, GPU CPU bound and SSGI mainly affects the GPU performance. However, if you have a lower end 60 class card like the RTX 3060 or the 4060 or the 4060 mobile, then it's best to stick to GTA O high or GTA O low. Next up, we have Sun Shadow Poppy. Uh, this affects the quality of shadows cast by the sun, moon, or any other uh, global light sources. Here's a comparison of low, medium, high, ultra, and overkill. So, the sun shadow quality adjusts the shadow resolution, that's the detail of the shadows. It also affects the shadow softness. At low, soft shadows are disabled and the shadows become uh, uh, sharper without a soft penumbra. It also adjusts the draw distance of shadows, the distance at which the shadows are cult. This impacts the CPU performance. So overall, uh, sun shadows affect the CPU as well as the GPU performance. The lowest shadow quality reset low disables soft shadows. Uh, rendering rather uh, sharp shadows with well-defined edges. The low quality sun shadows uh, disable uh, soft shadows, the shadow penumbra, rendering uh, sharp, well-defined shadows. It also significantly reduces the draw distance of the shadows to just a few meters ahead of the player. Here you can see as soon as you sort of just move a few meters away from the shadows, they're cold. And then they pop in as soon as you uh, start walking towards uh, them again. Medium and high increase the draw distance of the shadows and also enable soft shadows. Medium slightly increases the draw distance while high significantly increases the draw distance of shadows. This means that uh, medium and high are going to be more CPU intensive uh, than low. Considerably more CPU intensive. So if you're CPU bound or if you're trying to hit 140, 160 FPS, reducing shadow quality to medium or low might help. Medium and low primarily differ with respect to the draw distance and the deep level of shadow softness. Medium is uh, soft, has soft shadows, but not as, much, not as soft as high. And it also, high also has a considerably higher draw distance. You can see this in the form of the finer foliage and tree shadows in the distance. Ultra and overkill quality shadows uh, further increase the draw distance, though it's not really noticeable over high. Uh, furthermore, they continue to increase the penumbra of it. The shadows become even softer. And lastly, Ultra and Overkill uh, enable the finest quality shadows uh, covering uh, vegetation, foliage, grass, trees, and other uh, finer geometry. Here you can see that uh, Overkill enables uh, the vegetation shadows, the grass, and the trees in the distance. Ultra does it as well, but Overkill uh, further increases the quality of the grass and the vegetation shadows. Sun shadow quality is the second most taxing setting in Battlefield 6 after SSGI. Uh, overkill is almost 20% uh, slower than low. 
Ultra is 15% slower than low. High is 9% uh, slower and medium is only 2.5% slower than low. Now here going from low to medium and high increases the GPU as well as the CPU load. So keep that in mind if you're going for higher refresh rates. Ultra and Overkill primarily increase the shadow detail and increase the GPU load. Medium is medium and high are the sweet spots for most people, but if you're aiming for 144 and 160 FPS, then you might want to stick to medium or perhaps even low if you can't hit your target. Next up, we have uh, volumetric quality. Now, this adjusts uh, the quality of uh, inter the interaction of light with particle effects like fog, smoke, and smog. At higher quality settings, as light passes through fog and the other particle effects, its path will be more and more defined, which will result in sharper and more higher resolution god rays, volumetric rays, like here. While uh, low results in pretty much you can't see the edges of the god rays, the volumetric rays. At high, you can slightly see the edge. It's a bit blurry, but it's still fairly defined. At ultra, it's the most defined. The same applies to the fog and smoke and all the other particle matter. At low, they'll just look like blobs without any definite shapes. At high and ultra, they'll look more defined as light passes through them and it illuminates the path of light. Uh, Performance-wise, uh, this is kind of taxing volumetric quality is pretty taxing. Uh, low is 9% faster than ultra and 6% faster than high. For most people aiming for 120, 140 FPS, I'd say like, go, go with high because since this is GPU bound, it's not gonna impede your uh, race to the top. So, uh, but if you're already GPU bound, if you're trying to hit 70, 80 FPS and are struggling with that, then drop it down to low because then you're GPU bound probably. The effect setting is another graphics quality setting that drastically increases the CPU overhead during explosions, collisions, and other finer particle effects. Here we have effects quality at high on the left and effects quality at low on the right side. While the difference between the two is minimal, mainly uh, high mainly increases the number of particles, uh, embers, uh, debris, and other related particles during explosions and other uh, explosive effects. But the differences are fairly minimal. Most people won't even notice them. What you do notice is the frame rate impact. High is six to eight percent slower than low during uh, explosions, collisions, and other uh, combat intensive effects. We recommend everyone to set this to low as you barely lose any fidelity and you gain a sizable uh, improvement in your run percentile. 